So I'm working on a project about the American Civil War and I found this beautiful old map of Gettysburg and I'd like to digitize some of the items off this map including the different lines of battles, where the locations of the various armies were. Really the first step in this process will be to geo-reference this image. This is really a useful technique for anyone working with satellite imagery or scan maps that don't have spatial reference data. Now when you're geo-referencing an image, you're essentially taking points on that image and assigning coordinates to them. And sometimes that can be quite easy and straightforward if you already have existing coordinates or even graticules. Unfortunately, we don't have that luxury with this particular map. So in this technique, I'm going to be taking this image and cross-referencing landmarks on a base map. To get my base map, I'm gonna be using one of the most popular plugins of all time, which is Quick Map Services. If you don't already have this installed, go to Plugins, Manage and Install Plugins, and then under the all category you can search for the word quick map without any spaces you'll find it right here you can install it then you can come up to your web drop down menu go to quick map services and then choose osm osm standard now it gives us this beautiful base map which i can zoom in on now my problem is that i honestly don't know where gettysburg is located specifically so that's not a big problem because there's another plugin called osm place search I'm gonna go back to plugins, manage and install plugins, and now I can search OSM place search. I've already got it installed, so go ahead and install that. And then you can go to plugins, OSM place search. Now I can do a name search for Gettysburg. And right here at the top, it's located in Pennsylvania. I'm pretty sure this is the one that I want. So I'll double click and yes, indeed. This is the Gettysburg that I am looking for. Now, if you go up to the layer dropdown menu, you can see the georeferencer tool right here. Click on this, it's gonna launch an entirely new panel. And if you wanna bring in your image, come up here to the top left where it says open raster, this button right here. Click on that, now I can navigate to my image, which by the way, I got on the Library of Congress site. And there we go, the image is now placed in our panel here. You'll also notice that the cursor has changed to this crosshair icon. That's because now I'll be able to use this to add what's called a ground control point to my image. And these are the points that I mentioned earlier where you can specify coordinates that relate to the map. So if you don't see the crosshair icon, come up here and you can click on this button right here, which is add point. Once again, this existing map doesn't have any coordinates that I can just click on and manually enter in. So I need to use landmarks. So I'm gonna zoom in right here. And if you notice the city center, this is a pretty clear landmark. And if I come look at the base map, you'll notice that it looks pretty much the same right here. These are the same locations. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the center right here as my first point. Now it's asking me to manually enter the X and Y coordinates that correspond to this selecting point on the image, which again, we don't have. So we can come down here and click on this from map canvas button. Make sure that this is checked over here that automatically hide georeferencer window, just makes it easier to work with. Once I click on that, it's gonna automatically hide that. And I simply come in here and click on the corresponding spot, which is city center. And now you can see the coordinates have been filled in here. So I can select okay. And now if we look down here, this new field has been entered, which will show us the coordinates of the source X and Y, as well as the destination right here. So this is the ground control point table. So every time we enter a new point, it's gonna enter a new field or a new record right here. So now I'm gonna zoom out and simply repeat this process on landmarks that I think are pretty good. So if I come over here, you'll notice that there's these predominant streets that are still existing. So we have Hanover Street right here, or Hanover Road. And if I come over here to the base map and zoom out, you'll notice that sure enough, here is Hanover Road. And it intersects with this little creek right here. So this is actually another great landmark. So I'm gonna come over here and just click and do from map canvas, and then come straight over here and click. Okay, and there we go, we have another little dot so I'm gonna zoom in now here, do the same thing over here from Map Canvas, right here, York Street, okay. And I'm just gonna repeat this process. There's actually two other big prominent roads over here with a creek or a little river that's crossing over Chambersburg. Okay, let's click that from Map Canvas. Here we go, this street over here. Sure enough, there it is. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add a total of 10 points. So I'm gonna quickly speed through this. Okay, so I have just over 10 points added to my image, which is great when I go to run the georeferencing process. But first I need to tweak my settings via this big yellow button right here 
the transformation settings. At the top, we have the transformation type, which is very important because these are different algorithms which are gonna control how your image is actually transformed when you run the process. Basically, how much distortion is gonna be introduced and how is the distortion gonna be introduced. And your selection here will really depend on what you're trying to do with the image. In this case, I want it to be as geographically accurate as possible because I'm gonna be digitizing and creating my own polygons based on the imagery on this image. Now, if you wanna do a little bit of a deep dive into these algorithms, I'll link down in the video description to the specific documentation on QGIS's website that gives you a short summary of each of these. You can also just test these out by running the georeferencing process multiple times using these different transformation types, and then you'll be able to quickly visually see what they're doing. So let's just go with a polynomial right here, polynomial one. I have the target CRS set to my project CRS, and this is because there's no CRS information on this particular image that I can use to match it, so I don't wanna bother with that right now. Down here under output settings, I can specify where the image is gonna be saved, how it's gonna be resampled. There's a handful of different methods you can test out here. You can also generate a PDF map or report. I've selected to save out these uh, ground control points, which I'll be able to load later. If you look over here on the panel, you can actually load these back very quickly. So if you wanna run the geo-referencing process again, you'll have those points at a later time. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. And now if I click on this green button, it's gonna start the geo-referencing process, and then it's gonna automatically slap this image on my map here. Now if I zoom out, Voila, I have my image and you can see it's a little bit distorted, but let's zoom in and really get a good vibe for what's going on here. So if I just toggle this on and off, that's looking pretty dead on. I can also hold control and hit three to bring up layer styling and then look at the transparency. And if I bring the transparency down to something like 20, you can start to see how good we're looking here, which is actually looking pretty close. I'm gonna go all the way down here yeah, check this out. This is looking quite good, actually. Very, very cool. Again, you can always jump back into the georeferencer, load the raster again, and then simply change the transformation type to whatever you want to test these out, which I suggest that you do, because there are just so many options here, you wanna get it right. Now you can see over here on my local drive, I have a new geotiff as well as this points file. Now what I wanna do is head over to this new felt map and I can simply drag and drop this GeoTIFF in, and I'm gonna do all my digitizing right here in Felt. Now, Felt's pipeline is gonna handle this upload no problem. And what's beautiful about Felt is that I don't have to zoom around and search for Gettysburg. I can now simply double click on this layer and it's gonna zoom us right in, and there we go. We now have Gettysburg. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna grab the Polygon tool, and I'm gonna to start to do some digitizing. All right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to learn more about QGIS, go check out our QGIS Corner playlist. I'll link to that down in the video description. And be sure to subscribe to our channel and activate notifications. I'll see you next time.